So today we're at Lynn Run State Park, which is one of the top visited state parks here in Laurel Mountain. It neighbors Forbes State Forest. And today we are visiting the Adams Falls Natural Area. This area attracts people for two reasons. One being the waterfall that this area is named after, and the other being this beautiful flat rock formation that forms along Lynn Run. So we're here at Adams Falls, and depending on if you come after a rainstorm, sometimes this waterfall is really flowing. And during the different seasons, it looks really pretty with the snow and the different colored trees in the fall. So today we look around Lynn Run State Park and we see a lot of large trees and lush understory, but it wasn't always like that. When the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania acquired the property in 1909, this area was actually considered a wasteland. From the 18th to early 20th centuries, trees were considered an inexhaustible resource in Pennsylvania, but the state was quickly losing millions of acres of forest. The old growth forests in what is now Lynn Run were logged by the Byers and Allen Lumber Company. A railroad went through this area to ship logs and other materials, and sparks from trains caused dry treetops and stumps to catch on fire. In 1895, Dr. Joseph Rothrock became the first commissioner of what is now the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, spearheading the state forest system that helped restore places like Lynn Run State Park. So the forest that we see growing around us today is called second succession forest, meaning it's a forest that's grown up after something uh, dramatic has happened to the original forest, like in this case, logging and fires. So there are a variety of trees here. There are beautiful hemlocks that have come back and that's the state tree of Pennsylvania and also a variety of broadleaf trees as well. doing the flat rock trail which is a half mountain half mile out walking trail and as you're walking along the trail you'll be walking along the Lynn Run stream and you'll see that there are cabins along the stream and here at Lynn Run you can rent cabins here that were constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s. This is one of the more popular trails here at Lynn Run because it does take you to the flat rock rock formation and people like to go see that. So being from Latro, which is about 20 minutes away from here, we remember coming here to Lynn Run as kids. So this area is really nostalgic for us because we have a lot of memories of picnicking, playing on the playground, and putting our feet in the water. As you're walking along the trail you come upon this abandoned house and when we were little it was always one of the fun spots along our hike because we would get to kind of like play in the like rocks and like look through the windows and try to like pretend like what this building would have been. So we got a GoPro, the Hero 8, and we're gonna put it in the water. And it like feels weird to put it in the water, but it's allowed to, so let's do it. Look how cool it looks. They just pull it out. <laughs> We just finished up at Adams Falls in Flat Rock and we had a great time playing with our GoPro in the water and it was a good walk.
Absolutely. And now we're going to Spruce Flats Bog in Forbes State Forest. Let's go. We made it up to Spruce Flats and we feel like we're surrounded by all these ferns that you see in like Jurassic Park. I know they're so tall. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're like in a prehistoric time. So while we were walking along the trail to Spruce Flats Bog, we came across a really big example of a plant called Jack in the Pulpit. This has got a really fun name and it's a really unique looking plant. It looks like something you should only see in the tropics, but the way you can identify it is it has one stem that kind of splits in the middle and then two sets of leaves and in the center in the springtime you can find this beautiful flower and it's got these stripes on it so we're really excited that we came upon a very special flower to pennsylvania this is mountain laurel this is the state's uh, official flower and what we have also been doing on our hike today is documenting and identifying different kinds of plants and animals that we found with an app called iNaturalist. iNaturalist is a free app that you can download to help identify different things just by taking pictures of them and you can also use the app to document the different things that you have found. So we took a picture of the mountain laurel and you can see it there. These flowers haven't quite opened yet, but when they do open, they'll be white with a couple of different pink flecks in them. And they're a really beautiful flower, often mistaken for rhododendron, but these are unique to Pennsylvania and the Appalachians. Okay, so the one really cool thing about iNaturalist is how it uses AI technology to read your photograph to identify it. And when you upload the photo, what it does is it uses the known photographs of that animal or plant to cross-reference with your photo, so then it gives you a suggestion. But since iNaturalist is like a community, what you can do is you can see other people's observations in the area, and if you know of a more specific taxonomy of their identification, you can either verify it or provide a more specific suggestion for them. So then as the app collects more and more information, it can provide more and more information to new users. So here's an example of our Jack in the Pulpit observation from today. So we uploaded it and we already see that somebody else on the app verified our identification. So it now considers our data research grade. made it to Spruce Flats Bog, one of the most unique places in Forbes State Forest and on Laurel Mountain. The 305 acre Spruce Flats Bog and Wildlife Area is part of the 60,000 acre Forbes State Forest. Spruce Flats Bog is 28 acres formed by a mountaintop depression. Now, a bog is a type of wetland and bogs are characterized by poor soil, acidic waters, peat deposits created by decaying plant matter, and specially adapted plants like sphagnum mosses and carnivorous plants like pitcher plants and sundew. Most bogs are found in low-lying areas, but Spruce Flats Bog is unique because it's found on a mountaintop. Thousands of years ago, this depression in the mountaintop transformed from a bog into a meadow and then into a forest. Around 1900, lumbermen harvested the old-growth hemlock forests in this area which they called spruces, giving the area the name Spruce Flats. Hemlocks were valuable for their large trunks and tannins used in the tanning industry. They also absorb a lot of water, so once the hemlocks were gone, this area became a bog again. So the bog today features about six to eight inches of peat, which is created by decaying plant matter, and almost two and a half feet of mud. Eventually, this area is going to become a meadow once again, and then that meadow will transform into a forest, just like it was uh, over a hundred years ago. 
So there's a multiple geocache up here where first we had to find the location of the final cache place by looking for this one. So we found it, not telling you guys where it is up here, but it's around here and it has the location for the physical cache for the next part in it. So I think we're gonna go try to find that. We're now walking on the Wolf Rocks Trail and we're coming across a lot of mountain laurel. The flowers aren't quite blooming yet, but they should be blooming soon. So there's some mountain laurel right here and you can see that the leaves are a lot smaller and the uh, rhododendrons, which they're often mistaken for, have much bigger leaves and much bigger flowers and that's a way you can tell the difference. Catherine's currently bushwhacking to find this geocache. So we went to get part two of the geocache and there was like a 30 to 50 foot bushwhack that I had to do. And while we were back there about to open the cache, we thought maybe we heard a bear or some kind of animal that didn't sound like a deer or anything like that. So we decided to get out of there and now we're back at the trailhead for Wolf's Rock and I think we're gonna head over to Beam's Rock now. So we made it to the Beam Rocks Trailhead. Beam Rocks is a really popular destination here in Forbes State Forest. It gives you a really beautiful 180 degree overlook of the forest below. It's right along the Westmoreland Somerset County border. So we're gonna take the short hike out to the overlook and enjoy the beautiful view. So we had a great day hiking today at Lynn Run State Park in Forbes State Forest. Absolutely, like we always do. And while we were out hiking, we had a bit of an epiphany for what we can call our community uh, here online. And so we've decided to call you the travel bugs, paying homage to our love for geocaching, the little trackables that you can move from cache to cache are often called travel bugs. So we thought that was an appropriate name. Yeah, so don't forget to check out our blog, everywhereforward.com. We have a post about the top hikes in Laurel Highlands that include some of the hikes that we did today. And give us a follow on Instagram. Our account is at everywhere underscore forward. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.